Let's explore about phenolphthalein today. Phenolphthalein is a very common indicator used in laboratories and uh, this is used uh, in acid-base titrations. But let's first understand what the molecule looks like and then we can understand how it can work as an indicator. So phenolphthalein is an indicator for acid-base titrations and it might have some other uses also. Now from the name you can understand that uh, there is phenol molecule somewhere in this molecule or maybe somehow associated and thalene. Thalene is indicating towards thalic acid. What is thalic acid? It's a simple dicarboxylic acid with uh, a benzene ring and two carboxylic acid groups um, in an ortho relation. They can be isothalic acid and terthalic acid also. In isothalic acid, these two carboxylic acid groups are in meta relation. And uh, in this terthalic acetic uh, thalic acid, these two acid groups are in para relation. So, but the thalic acid, if there is no iso or ter, then you can say that it's simply thalic acid and this one is your thalic acid. Okay, and this thalic acid molecule can very easily get dehydrated to re release an H2O and uh, produce thalic acid anhydride, which is called thalic anhydride. So you can see the formation of a five-membered ring. If you're thinking how it got formed, so the reaction is very simple. You can see this lone pair here. You can attack it here at this carbonyl group and... Uh, what you get is and then this carbonyl group can restore and this OH minus gets released and the H plus here from also gets released so you can get this thalic anhydride so thalic acid is very easily dehydrated and it exists as thalic anhydride. Now let's see the preparation of phenolphthalein. We know the connection that phenol and thalic acid and especially thalic acid anhydride as I mentioned here is connected with this molecule. The preparation is very easy. You just have to mix these two things thalic anhydride and phenol in an acidic medium and heat it. So you have phenol and thalic anhydride and concentrated H2SO4 and you have to heat it. And then you can form phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein. Okay, so this can also be referred to as a thalene dye test. This can also be referred to as thalene dye test. So phenol can after this reaction phenol will give a thalene dye which is phenol thalene dye there could be other thalene dyes also we will see so phenol phenol thalene can then change color in um in a, in the basic solution and then you can know that there was a phenol other phenols like cresols they change they produce different colors so they can also be used in this kind of a test and the test is called thalene dye test okay so let's proceed. Let's first make phenolphthalein. So what happens? This is your thalic anhydride and then you have concentrated H2SO4. So there is H plus and then it can attack on uh, one of the oxygen here and it can protonate it. And then you see that this becomes like an electrophile. This is an electrophile and this is an aromatic ring, activated aromatic ring. And you can understand that this from here, the plus charge can come to this carbon, this electron can move here. And this C plus from here, the C can attack at the para position. And uh, then what you get is an, uh, one hydrogen from here gets released to so minus H plus also. And then you get uh, this thing. Right. Yeah. And then uh, there could be one more like here at this OH group. The H plus can attack and there 
a water can be released and a carbocation can be formed at this carbon at this carbon then again we have an electrophile and again we have a phenol which is activated <coughs> at the para position and it can so you see the carbocation then you see electrophilic aromatic substitution at uh, the para position of phenol and then you get phenolphthalein this is the phenolphthalein molecule okay so this reaction was with phenol and what you get was phenolphthalein if this reaction is done with anything else like like this is phenolphthalein so you can see two phenol molecules here attached to the phthalic acid part and if uh, you use a cresol for example if you use o cresol so what is o cresol it's toluene and then OH at a, or maybe it's better to say that it's phenol with a CH3 at the ortho position and this is also activated mostly at the para because this is more activating OH group is more activating than CH3 so the, the para of OH is more activated and here you will see the attack will occur and they are connected to the thalic acid part and you have two cresols so this is Ocresol thalene, then you can have alpha naphthol thalene also. So, this is alpha naphthol, and then it's para position. This position is highly activated. So, here th this gets connected to these two parts, they get connected to the acid, thalic acid anhydride part. Okay, so these are thalene dyes, and they can change color in the basic medium. And each dye has a characteristic color so this test can the thalene dye test can be given by phenol also and uh, like simple phenol the simplest phenol which we know this one is the simplest phenol and other phenols also like cresol and naphthol so these dye change color at specific pH in basic medium around 7 to 10 and a specific color is produced by each dye as I was talking for phenolphthalein the color is pink as you can see this is and this color is uh, acquired at a pH around 8.3 in fact if you see uh, the as the pH increases from highly acidic to highly basic medium phenolphthalein changes color from orange to colorless then pink and then again colorless and these are the pH ranges this is highly acidic pH is less than minus one and then this is uh, like uh, from acidic to neutral and almost basic 8.3 there is no color and then at after 8.3 you see pink color and that lasts till pH 10 and then after pH 10 there is, uh, there is again no color so when you do titration in the laboratories it's recommended that you try do the titration slowly because uh, if you cross this uh, uh, region the pH 8.3 to 10 region then the color will be produced and also it will get vanished very fast so it the titration is done with this indicator the titration is done very slowly okay so what what makes the molecule colorful or colorless this is very interesting this will be explained here so let's see this is your thalene phenolphthalene molecule as we prepared it and uh, we prepared it in an acidic medium you, because you are using h2so4 so in the acidic medium it is colorless and it's like this why this is colorless uh, so yes yes we prepared it in acidic medium so this is somewhere between 0 to ph 8.3 right yes this is somewhere between 0 to 8.3 and this is colorless because you can see the each this is um, aromatic this ring is aromatic this ring is aromatic but here you see that uh, the conjugation is not extended from one of the ring to another ring right For, because if you had a, a double bond here maybe and no double bond here and somehow the double bond could extend the conjugation then uh, you would have an extended conjugation and there were more chances of having color with the molecule but there is no extended conjugation so there is no color and uh, when you add H plus when you go more acidic pH less than minus one then you get an orange color so why the orange color that could be very difficult to explain but why the color we will see 
so this H plus can get uh, attached to this part this oxygen and uh, what can happen uh, if it gets attached here then one of the lone pair will be used and it gets a positive charge and then to uh, the oxygen can carry the positive charge and it can also uh, take up these electrons and then form a carbocation here so from with this carbocation you have an empty p here and then the conjugation can extend in all the three rings right because the this electrons can move here and you can get a uh, positive charge here which can go to yeah then these electrons can move here then you can get a positive charge here and this positive charge can also reach till this oxygen and in the similar way this positive charge can reach till this oxygen and at these positions uh, three of these carbons also so there is highly extended conjugation and this thing is orange this is colorful now let's uh, yeah now let's move uh, on to um, this was this happened when you added when we add acid we got more acidic now let's get more basic so as you get more basic the you can see these hydrogens are slightly uh, acidic I think good enough acidic and uh, yeah good enough acidic and they can be released they can be released very easily and uh, so suppose one of the H plus gets removed as you reached uh, 8.3 pH and then one of the uh, H plus gets removed and you get uh, this O minus here so when you see this you can see uh, the lone pair here can go here and this can come here and this can come here and this minus can come at this oxygen which is favorable because at this oxygen the minus will be conjugated um, minus charge will be shared by two oxygen atoms right so this electron movement and you see the minus from this O transferred to this O and then you again see that there is extended conjugation but this H is also acidic so at the same time this is also getting released so I should draw that and now like now you can see that there is extended conjugation so there is a double bond here and you can see that there is extended conjugation so this molecule didn't have any extended conjugation and then after that you see if you make it acidic then you get extended conjugation if you make it more basic the solution more basic then you get again extended conjugation as you can see here and this thing is uh, this happens after between 8.3 to 10 because if you make m the solution more basic then something else will happen and the extended conjugation will be lost again but anyways this is the pink color which uh, is very normally observed by students in the laboratory using phenolphthalein as an indicator for acid base titration what happens uh, after this what happens uh, when you turn the, the solution more basic so when you turn the solution more basic then now you have more OH minus and one of these OH minus can attack here and these electrons can move uh, like this this and the O the minus which was at the the hydroxide ion uh, oxygen can move to this oxygen which is better because then it will be a resonance which is better because it will be resonance stabilized with uh, three carbons also so then you get this thing and once again you see here there are no double bonds and the conjugation has been lost and it's colorless again so colorless first like if you start from the most uh, uh, acidic medium then you have orange color and then colorless then going to pink color and then going to colorless back again okay so there is a very interesting GIF uh, from uh, Wikipedia I got this and you can see that it's now we are at like highly acidic situation and then uh, there you can see this carbocation here and it's now shown that as you turn it more basic 
the H plus is released and it gets colorless. H plus is released, it's gone now, and the molecule gets colorless and it becomes the thalene dye, just like how we manufactured it in uh, the acidic medium. Now, once again, the OH minus is coming and it will abstract this hydrogen from here. This hydrogen will also get abstracted. Just wait for a while. But now you can see this is getting abstracted and then you can see this uh, minus charge is going to this oxygen here and then you see again this H plus is getting abstracted and the solution is turning pink and the molecule is showing a pink kind of color and uh, the extended conjugation has also been shown here which is very nice. Resonance stabilization and extended conjugation has been shown. This is the bonds dancing. And now you see you attack one more OH minus at the this carbon here. And uh, the molecule changes shape. And uh, now it's colorless back again. And you see 2 O minus. So this this animation can be found at uh, Wikipedia if you search for phenolphthalein and then you get a uh, if you scroll down then you will get this GIF which explains this thing very nicely what it, it shows also uh, here the uh, now the molecule is planar at the central carbon and then it gets tetrahedral and uh, then again it gets planar and then there is extended conjugation so that's very interesting to see what is happening here and the color is being caused by extended conjugation as we can understand now. Thank you very much for watching this video.